listening to, you are absolutely listening to the George Jesper Love Show coming to you live from the Funny Farm. Now, with no further ado, here comes Georgie. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. It has truly been a busy day at the Funny Farm. Wow. And we're not done yet. You're listening to the George Espenlob Show coming to you live, yep, from the Funny Farm in a place called Our World. In our world, it's a whole lot safer than it is in yours. So we invite you for the next 45 to 50 minutes to come in, sit back, relax, and listen. Because you're going to be listening to old-time radio in the 21st century. I do want to say this before we bring in uh, the radio show out of Chicago, Illinois, entitled Unshackled, I want to say that tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, we will be having with us, by the way of live streaming, that's right, live streaming, a man by the name of Essie Baghiri. Now, we had Essie on a couple months ago, I guess it was when he was on his way to Hollywood. In fact, the night that we interviewed him on the radio show, Essie was in his vehicle moving toward Los Angeles, and he pulled over, and we did the interview while he was in his car between Canada and L.A. Tonight, we are bringing Essie back for two reasons. Number one, For you that missed his incredible story, he has gone from child soldier, terrorist in the Iranian army when they fought against Iraq for that six or seven years. He went from child soldier to trauma to addiction to a long, long journey that took him to different parts of the world, and now to Hollywood. What a fantastic story. What a fantastic journey. And we wanted to bring Essie back, and we wanted to live stream so everyone could get a look at this man. What an inspiration. So tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, we will be live streaming our interview with Essie Baghiri, and he is on the western end of Canada, so there's a three-hour time difference between us and him. But at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, we will have Essie Baghiri with us. You can not only see him, but you can hear that incredible story and where he's at in his journey today. He has recently been to Hollywood, met with producers, directors, screenwriters, so on and so forth. And things are in the works. And so he will tell you all about that from beginning, throughout, and up to today. What an incredible story. So make sure that you check out the post on the George Husband Lob Show page on Facebook so you can see how to get a hold of that live streaming. And I challenge you to come in, uh, comment, you have any questions for Essie, I know that he'll be happy to answer them. And so that's at 10 p.m. tonight, live streaming. The George Husband Love Show will be live streaming uh, off of our Facebook page. And we'll be streaming, let me say it this way, we'll be live streaming into our Facebook page. Uh, so be on the lookout for it. 
and you can join us tonight. All righty. With no further ado, as Charlie always says, oh, oh, let me say this. Whether you're down the street, around the corner, across America, or somewhere around this great big world, we welcome you to the George Espenlob Show. <laughs> We've been hard at it all day long with the radio, live streaming, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if I found, sound like I'm getting a little fuzzy, it's because I'm getting a little fuzzy. My brain housing group <clears throat> is slowing down somewhat, and hopefully I can make it through the next several hours, and we'll complete this mission today, and then we'll sit back and relax. But right now, ladies and gentlemen... I want to take you into a true life story of an individual who lost his way but found his life when he was finally unshackled. How do you How do? do, you do? Charged, Charged with, with a with crime, most people plead innocent even when they know their own guilt. Well, the man in this story was no exception. He was a drug dealer on a big scale, moving tons of illegal drugs from state to state, fearing no one while serving the drug cartel and himself. He was guilty and knew it, and he was able to face his crime only when his heart and mind and life were unshackled. Where's the mechanic? I don't know. Why do you ask? I'm the owner of that van. I want to be sure it gets repaired right away. Right. He said it needed a new alternator, and I went to get the money to fix it. Which van? There, the white one. I'm a police officer. You're under arrest. Huh? Freeze, or I'll shoot! Okay, Carlos, you've had your cigarette. Now we want some answers. What do you want to know? You had more than a million dollars worth of marijuana in that van and more than a hundred thousand quaaludes. You're in the big leagues, Carlos. We know the grass is from Colombia and the quaaludes are from Europe. Tell us about your partners. I don't know what you're talking about. Work with us, Carlos, and you may walk out of here today. I'm telling you, I don't know where any of that stuff came from. If you don't cooperate, the judge will throw the book at you, Carlos. Do you want to spend the rest of your life in jail? Lighting the darkness with true life stories that bring the good news, this is Unshackled, dramatized and produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. Being homeless in summer is hard enough, but winter makes life unbearable for people living on the street. Men and women, or mothers with small children, are all welcome at Pacific Garden Mission, though, the place where the doors have been open for more than 120 years where food, clothing, and a clean bunk for the night are offered free to those in need. Medical and dental care are also provided. The goal is not to create dependency, but to change lives. Counselors and pastors help the homeless face up to the attitudes and behaviors that imprison them and find the one who sets them free, giving them new life, like the man in this story. And now for broadcast around the earth, here's program number 2,457 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. The man in our story grew up in a middle-class home in Puerto Rico. Intelligent and loved by his family, he did well in school and even went on to college. But he and his brother became ensnared by drugs, Drawn by the easy money and the thrill of adventure, both of which betrayed them. This is the true story of Manuel Baega right now on Unshackled. My real name is Manuel Baega, but I sat in that Baltimore jail hoping the police wouldn't discover my true identity since I was wanted in North Carolina on drug charges. My alias of Carlos Bueno was one of many, I assume, during 14 years in the drug business, a career that began in Puerto Rico when I was 12 and began helping my brother package heroin. I thought I was invincible, outsmarting the law for so long. 
Now I felt trapped and guilty about my wife and daughter in Miami. As soon as I could, I called Lori Collect. Yes, operator. I'll accept the charges. Lori, I've been arrested. I'm in jail. Oh, no. What are we going to do, Manuel? Calm down. Everything is going to be okay. But, but where are you? Everyone is looking for you. I'm in Baltimore. If they call back or stop by, tell them I'm in the Baltimore City Jail. Call my brother, too, honey. He'll know how to help. Uh, don't worry, okay? How's Amy? Oh, she's doing fine. But what am I going to do now, Manuel? My mother went back to Puerto Rico, and, and I'm here by myself. I'll be there soon. Don't worry. I need you to hang in there, Rory. Please, remember that I love you. Bail was set at $250,000, but I was sure the judge would reduce it to something I could afford. I was equally sure the drug cartel would get me out. I had a good reputation, and they knew from my previous arrest that I wouldn't roll over on them, not even to my lawyer. It'll take some time to arrange a bail reduction, Carlos. The judge has a backlog of cases, and uh, you're from out of state, so he may play hardball. I've got to get out of jail. I have a wife and a baby to take care of in Miami. I'll do what I can. How did the police find that stuff in my van anyway? Well, the mechanic broke into your van hoping to steal something. Then he saw how much marijuana was there. He got frightened and thought the mafia would try to kill him. So he made an anonymous call to the police. He had no business breaking into my van like that. They ought to arrest him. Well, you haven't admitted anything, have you? Of course not. All right. Well, uh, how do you want to plead? Not guilty, of course. I'm innocent. Word got around in jail about the charges against me, and I became a big man in the eyes of the other inmates. They all wanted to be friends in the hope that I could help them when I got out. Two months passed, and the judge refused to reduce my bail. Because of my extensive contacts, I continued my drug operations from jail, making deals with guys who were being released. Before long, I had a steady supply of money and drugs. Lori moved back to Puerto Rico to live with her parents. Then my brother brought her and Amy to visit me. We were separated by a long counter, but I was allowed to hug and kiss them when they arrived. What do you do all day, Manuel? I supervise work details. The jail is run by inmates, supervised by guards. I was able to help some of the guys, so they elected me to represent our section. The job gives me freedom to move around outside the cell. Are you able to get the stuff you need in here? Everything is cool, Jose. I've got it all worked out. Manuel, have they discovered your real name yet? No, but I'm sure they will soon. What will happen if they do? Well, I'm a fugitive in North Carolina. If the judge finds out, he'll probably sentence me to 15 years. Maryland won't release me on parole because of the outstanding warrant, so I'll do 12 years. After that, I may be sent to North Carolina, where I face 10 more years. Oh, 22 years in jail. Don't worry, Manuel. Our friends in New York gave me some money for the lawyer. If he can reduce your bail to 100000 you'll be free. One way or another, we'll get you out. How's Mother taking this? Uh, she's really upset, man. Bad enough, I went to prison. Now you're facing it, too. She sent me a Bible, but I don't believe in that stuff. God exists only in the mind. Because I did my job well as inmate representative, I got along well with the guards. But the judge still wouldn't reduce my bail. As the weeks passed, Lori became more and more disillusioned, and I became more desperate. I wanted out, but didn't know what to do. Hey, Carlos, how's it going? <sighs> I just talked with my wife, and she's not too happy about the whole situation. Yeah, it's hard on everyone, isn't it? If I had known what I was getting into when I started doing drugs, oh, man. I knew what I was getting into. I watched my brother go through heroin withdrawal and swore I'd never do that, but I did. Hey, yeah? How'd you get off it? Man, I was on methadone for seven years. I finally went to the hospital. Is that your Bible, Carlos? Yes. Those guys that have Bible study here gave it to me. You read it? No. I've been reading the New Testament, and I'm praying that God will help me. Listen, Billy, I'm not into that. As a matter of fact, you can have that Bible if you want. I've got another one my mother sent me. Oh, Carlos, it's beautiful. Oh, real leather. Oh, thank you, man. One night, as I lay on my bunk and thought about my wasted life, reality hit me. My parents once had high expectations for me, and I had squandered their trust. 
I had lied and cheated and stole, all for my own pleasure. I had a beautiful wife who loved me and a daughter whom I abandoned for my drug dealing. Tears began running down my face, and I covered my eyes, sobbing uncontrollably. Aloud, I said, God, I don't believe in you, but if you are real, I need you now. Something was happening to me. I knelt beside my bed and buried my face in the pillow so no one would hear my sobs. Help me. Please help me. I cried over and over. Then a strange feeling of peace came over me, and seeing the Bible Mother sent me, I opened it up to the middle and began reading Proverbs. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. I've read for a long time, slept peacefully that night, and the next morning called my brother. Manuel, there's a war going on out here. Two of our guys were killed yesterday in New York. You're kidding. No, I'm not. Who did it? I don't want to talk over the phone. Other people have been killed, too. Did you get some money for me, Jose? Yeah, I gave 5000 to your lawyer and some to the bondsman to get you out. I'm going to trial. I want out now. Hey, it's bad out here, Manuel. The whole organization is collapsing. Greed, I guess. What about the boss? He's not too sure about you. Thinks you have too much influence with the other cartel members. You tell everyone that I'll do my time if I have to. I'm not going to turn on anyone. That night in my cell, I picked up the Bible again and read Proverbs chapter 3. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. I had read for a long time, then sat and thought about my life. I was headed for destruction. If I had gotten out on bail and gone to New York, I would have been killed. I closed my eyes and said, God, I know I've done so much wrong to others. I'm sorry for the way I've lived. I want to do better. I want to start over again. Please direct my path. I need your help. The next day, Billy came to my cell and talked. Hey, Carlos, you still get high? Why do you ask? Well, since I began reading the Bible, I stopped getting high, and I feel much better. I've been reading the Bible my mother sent, and I really like what it has to say. I'm telling you, Carlos, you don't have to get high with God. I have to go, Billy. I have a lot to do. Hey, God will help you. I don't need help. I just want out of jail. Ask God to help you, Carlos. Stop getting high. You don't need it. His words began to gnaw at me, and the next time I smoked pot, I felt confused. I continued reading the Bible, this time the New Testament. Then I asked God to help me quit using drugs. A few days later, I called my contact and told him not to send any more drugs. What was happening to me? A voice within me seemed to tell me to destroy my little black book with names and connections worth millions of dollars. What was happening to me? I stood transfixed and then tore it into little tiny pieces. I had a message from my lawyer. Carlos, we finally have a trial date and a strategy, and you want to plead guilty? I am guilty. That was my marijuana they found in that van. The Bible says, lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. Look, I understand you're into religion now, but that has nothing to do with this case. We can win. I recommend you plead innocent. I don't want you as my lawyer. 
You've paid me already. I've invested a lot of time in this case. I know, but I don't want you. I'm going to tell the judge I don't want you. In a moment, Manuel will tell us how this decision affected his life. Do you sometimes have trouble making the right decision? Well, we don't have all the answers to life's many questions, but God does. And he's given us the blueprint for success through the Bible, especially the Gospel of John. There you will learn how to choose what is best, where to turn for counsel, and how to have assurance in any circumstance. And you will learn how to help others like yourself who are struggling with difficulties. And this is powerful. So we've designed a Gospel of John Bible study course that we'd like to offer to you absolutely free. You may complete this course in your own home. All you need is a Bible, a pencil, and a desire for a closer walk with God. As you meditate on God's truth, you will begin to apply what you learn to your own situations, and God's plan for your life will become clear. And as soon as you finish each lesson, send it to us. You don't even need an envelope. Just fold and stamp it. To get started on the Gospel of John Bible study course, write to Pacific Garden Mission, Chicago, Illinois, 60605. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. And please include your address. The address of Pacific Garden Mission is 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. That's Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. The phone number, 312-492-9410. A new lawyer meant a new trial date and more time in jail. Time that I spent reading the Bible at night and helping other inmates during the day. One day, I saw a man sitting glumly in his cell, and I listened while he told me his predicament. I've been here 52 days just because I don't have a lousy $50 to pay my fine. What are the charges against you? Assault. I was in a bar and some guy pushed me, so we got in a fight. The police arrested me but let him go. Now my wife doesn't want anything to do with me. I don't even know where she is. Listen, Wayne. There's a program here called pre-trial release that lets you go out and work and return to jail to sleep. Some guys even get to stay at home. Oh, I, I probably don't even have a job anymore. Call them and see. Here's a quarter. Carlos, I don't believe it. They're going to give me my old job back. They'll even help me with my release. <laughs> That's great, Wayne. I'll help you fill out the papers. I can't believe I've been here all this time and I didn't hear about this program. Now call your mother-in-law and see if you can find your wife. Oh, no. I mean, she doesn't want anything to do with me. Just call. Here's another quarter. His wife forgave him, and when he was released a few days later, we all celebrated. He was the first of many I helped by writing letters, calling lawyers, social workers, clinics, and friends. I spent hours in the law library... And as word spread, the officers sent me the oppressed, the weak, the illegal aliens, whoever needed help. Working with city officials, I helped set up a program for Hispanics. My reputation was so good that when Lori came to visit, the head of the department let us visit privately in his office. Oh, Manuel, it's so good to see you again. Officer Smith picked us up at the airport and took us to the hotel. He told us you're a big help to him. And he wanted to do something for you in return. I was really worried about you and Amy and Mom being in a strange city where I don't know anyone. So I prayed and asked God to look after you. He answered my prayer when the officer volunteered to take care of you. Oh, I'm so glad you're reading the Bible, Manuel. I love you, Lori. I'm so sorry for all the heartache I caused you. When I get out, things will be different. What about your name? No one knows about that yet. Uh, I'll have to deal with that later. Waiting for my trial was agony, knowing that my course of action condemned me to a long separation from Lori and Amy. Many people wrote letters of recommendation for me. Officers in the jail, the head of the social workers, and others with whom I worked as inmate representative. But because I refused to implicate my partners, the judge sentenced me to ten years in prison, then suspended three years for my work in jail. Lori was there with Amy, and I saw the tears in her eyes as 
I was led away in shackles and bus to the diagnostic building at the state penitentiary. Early the next morning, I was awakened by an officer who said I had a phone call. Manuel, I love you. Don't worry, I will wait. Lori, how in the world did you do it? Do what? Call me here at the diagnostic center. Uh, the chaplain made it possible. Your call is an answer to prayer. When I got here last night, I was so down, so afraid of losing you. I will wait for you, Manuel. Be strong. God is with you. God was with me. I worked in the prison library and read many books about drug addiction. Through my studies, I began to realize that most of the inmates were in prison because of drug or alcohol. I remembered how many years I had been addicted, had tried to control the desire, but always went back to drugs. Now the desire was gone completely. God had taken it away and changed many things about me. One night, I went to my first Bible study and listened to a pastor who worked with a Christ-centered drug rehabilitation program. I followed every word he said. You need to be born again. Nicodemus was a religious leader who came to Jesus by night because he wanted to know more about God. Verse 3 of John chapter 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If you want to know God, then you come to Jesus, just like Nicodemus. He told his disciples, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. You must be born again of the Spirit of God. And that new birth comes when you approach God in faith, believing that he sent his only son to die for your sins. If there is anyone here who doesn't know Christ as their Savior, come forward now and I'll pray with you. I waited until the service was over then went up, introduced myself, and told him about the change in my life since the night I cried and prayed and began reading the Bible. Brother, you were born again that night. That's what happens when you have an encounter with Jesus Christ. I was what? Born again. Now you can have a new beginning, a fresh start. Only God can offer that, Carlos. Society will keep a record of your crimes. Family will always remember your wrongdoings. Others will seek revenge. But God is the only one who will receive you the way you are and help you start all over again. Take advantage of this new life. Learn about Jesus, who he is, and what he said about this new beginning. I went to Bible studies every night and daily grew in love with others and in obedience to God's word. I had a new plan for my life, to do God's will. I was transferred to another rougher prison where again I was elected inmate representative. I also took the job of janitor cleaning the offices and visitors room which humbled me. Then 32 months after my arrest I was paroled and accepted at the ministry in Baltimore that had reached out to me so much in prison, the Christ-centered drug rehabilitation program. I went there even though it meant another year's separation from Lori. Right away I called her. You're free? Manuel, it's wonderful. You have no idea. I called Mom, and she cried the whole time I talked to her. I told her not to worry, that God has really changed my heart. I'm not even tempted by drugs. God is real, honey. I know, Manuel. Your mother and I go to the same service on Sunday, and I went forward and committed my life to Christ, too. She thinks you're wonderful, Lori, and so do I. The way you have stood by me... God blessed me with the best wife in the world. When can we be together, Manuel? God will work things out for us, Lori. He is faithful. What about your false name and your case in North Carolina? (sighs) I don't know. I'm trusting God will let me know when and how to handle that. God blessed us in a beautiful way. 
the ministry helped Lori and Amy come to visit, and we spent a week together at the lakeside cabin of the ministry director. Another friend of the ministry gave us his car to use while she was there. Then my past caught up with me. A pastor from Puerto Rico challenged me many times to resolve the problem about my name. Finally, he shared his knowledge with the director in Pennsylvania. One week later, my brother called from Puerto Rico. Manny, the police came to the house looking for you. They know where you are. How did they find out? Who told them? They lied to Mom, showed her a picture of you, and said you'd been in a car crash and you were dying. She was hysterical and insisted you were in Maryland. You'd better get out of there right now before the FBI gets there. Jose, I'm not going anywhere. God will protect me. God can't help you now. You're going to end up in jail for ten years. Your wife won't wait that long. Get out of there. When the director from Pennsylvania called to inform the leadership that I was using an alias, I had no idea what to expect. I was amazed when the director came and offered to help me find a solution to my dilemma. Carlos, or whatever your name is, uh, don't turn yourself in just yet. Let's call a lawyer and find out the best way to do this. But the police will come here and arrest me. It will look worse if I don't turn myself in. The state of North Carolina is the one looking for you, right? Yes. Then we should deal with the authorities there. Maybe go there and turn yourself in. I'll go with you and testify on your behalf. You do that? Everyone here trusts you, staff and students. They all say you're doing a great job. Even my mother says you're the best student we've ever had. I dread the thought of going back to jail again. But I know God wants me to face this. I have to serve him with a clean heart. The ministry director went with me to North Carolina. There he testified on my behalf, submitting many letters of recommendation from various state officials. In spite of the prosecutor's demand for 10 years, the judge sentenced me to the minimum, 18 months in jail. I served my time, and at last, I was truly free. I am still working with the ministry that helped me so much. Since my ordination, I have served in many capacities, now as director. My brother was saved and is now free of drugs as well. God has blessed Lori and me with three beautiful daughters. What the Lord did for us, he will do for anyone. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Friend Manuel is right. There is no problem too big for God to solve if you give your life to him. Turn away from the world's way and follow Christ. He will set you free. Why not invite him into your heart right now? If you need help in this crucial decision, you're invited to get in touch with Pacific Garden Mission. Please note, our new address here at Pacific Garden Mission is 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. That's 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Our new phone number is 312-492-9410. 312-492-9410. Our new address here at Pacific Garden Mission is 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. That's 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Our new phone number is 312-492-9410. 312-492-9410.
And that, ladies and gentlemen, was another episode of Unshackled, produced and directed by Pacific Garden Mission out of Chicago, Illinois. I hope that you enjoyed that. If you know someone that didn't listen to it live tonight, please tell them, and they can go back and listen to it as many times as they want to. You can even download a copy or as many copies as you want. It doesn't cost you one single cent. And remember, we're heard on iHeartRadio, Spotify, SoundCloud, <coughs> YouTube, uh, Google Play, <coughs> uh, iTunes, the uh, VIP Network, uh, and it's on and on and on and on. So we're heard everywhere. <coughs> we're not only heard here in America, we are heard around the world. As I mentioned just last week, I believe, I was checking some statistics in some places. There are even people in Liberia that are listening to the George Espinlob show. So uh, we're, we're delighted for that. France, the Philippines, so on and so forth. Uh, and, and we're just so thankful that people are tuning in. But if you didn't listen to it now, well, you can go back and listen to it again. Or pass the word for people to go back and listen to it again. That's when the magic really starts because it starts bouncing all over cyberspace and travels all over the world. So we appreciate that so very much. Let me remind you that 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, we are going to be live streaming the George Espinlob Show. <coughs> Excuse me. We will be live streaming the George Espinlob Show into our Facebook page and into another location. And we will be having with us as a guest, Essie Baghari. And Essie was with us on the radio show a couple months ago. Uh, he is coming back tonight because I thought it would be good for people to actually see him and listen to his story. It's an incredible story. From child soldier to trauma to addiction to Hollywood. How about that one? And it will thrill you. As he is the author of a book, and he has recently been to Hollywood and met with producers, directors, screenwriters, so on and so forth, and they are in the process of coming up with a plan to create a movie about Essie's life. So, Essie Bagheri, 10 o'clock p.m. tonight, we will be live streaming, so check out the George Espinlob show page on Facebook, uh, we're probably going to stream into that, and we're going to probably stream up to YouTube at the same time or to another page on Facebook. So <clears throat> mark that down and make sure you check the George Espinlob show page on Facebook because it will be posted here very shortly, the time and the way to get there. So I thank you very, very much for tuning in tonight. It's been a long day. We have been streaming, we've been broadcasting, and we're going back to go do some more streaming. So it's been an incredible morning, afternoon, and evening. And I appreciate each and every one of you that has made it possible. You're a wonderful bunch, I'm telling you. So whether you're down the street, around the corner, across America, or somewhere around this world, I appreciate you. I really do. I thank you for your support. I thank you for all the love and all the gratitude and all the kind words that we receive. And we receive those words every single day from all parts of the country and even around the world. And I appreciate that. That's what keeps us going because we know that we're reaching people. It's not about us. It's about reaching people. I just need you to help me reach more people. So any way that we can reach out and touch more people will be so grateful and so thankful because it's all about you. I trust that you will have a very pleasant evening. And listen, if you don't have anything else to do, <coughs> excuse me, or even if you do have something to do, tune in tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, as we live stream our guest, Ezzy Bagheri, 
from child soldier to trauma to addiction to Hollywood. Incredible story. Incredible story. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> Got a frog in my throat. Uh, going to get out of here. Charlie and I are going to go take a quick little break, and then we're going to be right back at the board again. Uh, this time we're going in a different direction. Everybody get to see uh, see what Espen Love looks like. Uh, it's not very pretty anymore, I'm telling you that. But we're going to be live streaming, and so this time you'll be able to watch and see all the goofy stuff that goes on when you do a live program. Until then, if it's nighttime, have a good night. If it's daytime, have a great day. And I hope to see you at 10 o'clock p.m. tonight. Come in, ask questions. And don't be bashful. But until then, may God keep you right in the center of his hand. And I thank you. For me and all the gang here at the Funny Farm, everybody, and there is a gang of them. Thank you very much, and I'll see you at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Good night, everybody. <laughs>